you know, that sort of underdog show, My Hero Academia. <laughs> like over the past couple years, everyone was like, all right, I'll watch 900 episodes. I like to put Mikhaila from Sarah for the End in, in either side of this equation, just because I think he could use some friends. If we're starting at Mirko, I feel like we could go even further. Let's show a little more, you know? <laughs> You're watching convention coverage. So you've played so many different characters in so many different roles from so many different shows, from Seraph of the Inn to Ranking of Kings to Toilet Bound to My Hero. I'm sure this is probably a difficult question, but which of those characters, from which of those shows, would you say is your favorite to be a part of and why? Um, well, it, that, that is tough, you know, because you shouldn't pick your favorite children. Uh, you can, but you shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, I really, and I, I mean it when I say that all of these roles that I've had the, the immense fortune to play over the, the past few years have really, you know, they're all so important to me in a lot of ways. I try to find at least something I have in common with all of them, just to make sure I have that sort of baseline going forward. Um, so, uh, of course, I'm very fond of them all. Uh, just, to, you know, to give you a couple, maybe off the top of my head, uh, Mikaela from Seraph of the End, that was my very first anime role. I went in for that, and I thought I was the world's worst actor, uh, but we made it. Um, I have a real soft spot for Hanako-kun. I hope we get to do more of that show in the future, and thank you, yeah! Thank you. Um, and of course, you know, that sort of underdog show, My Hero Academia. Uh, <laughs> That sort of cult classic. Um, that's kind of one of the only characters I haven't had to say goodbye to. Uh, so that's really special to me. You know, I hope that that goes on for the next 500 years. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. That's a great question. Uh, I was wondering, what was your reaction of Deku getting added on Fortnite? Awesome. <laughs> I thought that's sick. You know, every other anime pro tag got to be in it, so why not Deku and friends? Um, yeah, it's awesome. I've got, um, I may or may not have attained a dub myself. So yeah, um, I just think it's cool. You know, he's part of something so much greater now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Is based by strangers, or it's one of my favorite yaois, and I'm a huge yaoi fan. Oh, great, great. <gasps> yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, what's yeah. what was your favorite moment? Moment as Mio. Uh, did I say it right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I there's Shun um, and me. I forget who's correct. who. Yeah. I, I, I played uh, Josh. Mio. All right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just I. Uh, there's so much to say about it. I thought overall, it, it, it's just a really beautiful movie. Um, mm -hmm. And I know there are fans out there who read the manga and everything, and I know there's kind of more story to tell, so I mm -hmm. hope I get to revisit uh, Mio and Shun someday. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, as far as favorite parts go, I just really like, you know, Mio is confident and assertive and, and knows what he wants and goes for it, and I really mm -hmm. respect that. So any, any time in the movie he gets to, you know, he gets to tease somebody or kind of jab them, uh, that's always a lot of fun for me. I, I, I like uh, those sort of mm -hmm. playful characters, and Mio definitely fit that bill. Thanks. <laughs> See you around. I hope you come back. Thank you so much. Have a great day. When you play the Midoriya, do you prefer to stand or to sit? Um, I, any voiceover, I'm standing, usually. Mm. Um, you know, that doesn't mean I don't sit down between takes and stuff while they're adjusting levels or, or timing, but, um, and not to knock anybody who does sit during voiceover, that's a perfectly valid part of the process. I just find I engage my voice and my diaphragm better if I'm standing up. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, good question. Of course, yeah. Is a character that is very passionate and has lots of convictions, sure. and I was wondering how tough it is to portray that in your acting. Um, I, I don't find it particularly tough, you know, I, uh, what is important to me that I, I portray and put forward is exactly what you said, that uh, Midoriya is in touch with his emotions and his convictions and his goals, and that kind of makes things easier. You know, there's not a whole lot of subtlety you have to uh, give him. He's, he wears his heart on his sleeve very much. He's very appreciative to his friends and, and his cooperators. So uh, I, what I, especially starting out, tried to convey was that he feels like a very real kid to me. You know, what he goes through, even though he lives in super goofy superhero land, um, is very real, and we can, uh, we can kind of, one way or another, feel for what he's gone through. Uh, so I think it's really special now, you know, six seasons later, uh, we've gotten to root him on the whole way. Uh, and, and I've been cheering for him as well, so. Thank you so much. My pleasure, thank you.
What hero would you absolutely not want to have save you? I, I'm not. I'm not picky, y'all. Uh, I would say <laughs> someone. I, I don't know. That's too hard. <laughs> Let's say I wouldn't want All Might to come and get me in his weak form. I would say, don't worry about. It. Someone else will handle this. Just sit down. Take a load off. <laughs> but he might do it anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. If two of the characters of any anime character you voiced met each other, who would they be and what would they do? Um, I, I really, I like to put Mikaela from Sarah for the End in, in either side of this equation, just because I think he could use some friends. Um, and probably Deku, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's uplifting, he's bright, he'd say like, uh, You'll find your family one day, kiddo. Uh, <laughs> that might that might end might not end well. Throughout the series, um, what is your favorite part about Deku's growth? Um, I I really love how he's um you know he people gravitate toward him and and he's able to make uh, allies and friends under kind of unlikely circumstances. So I think one of the best themes that my hero tries to present to people is that we're all stronger together. Um, so I love that he, even though he comes from basically nothing, he, uh, he's able to, uh, his kind of just determination and his grit and force of will uh, drives people to join up with him and, and, and team up together. And I just, that, that's always the coolest to me. I'm a sucker for that. That's a good answer. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Of course. Thank you. If you could be in any anime, what would the anime be? You mean like me personally, Justin? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big One Piece fan, y'all. Um, yeah! I finally feel vindicated. It seems like over the past couple years, everyone was like, all right, I'll watch 900 episodes. Um, I'm like, about time, y'all. Thank you. Um, I, I love One Piece. I'm a, I'm a swashbuckler at heart. So uh, I would love to be in there, even if it's just someone, you know, like, wow, watch out for his power! Um, yeah, I, I love that. What kind of devil fruit do you think he would have eaten? I don't think they would have given me one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure, of course. Great question. Is there anything you do like to keep yourselves motivated? Because I don't know if anybody else can relate, but like sometimes like I get sidetracked so easily. Like um, sometimes it's hard for me to just get out of bed or like go to the gym or just sure. even like watch what I'm eating and stuff or just yeah. do stuff like for school. You know. So is there anything you do like to keep yourself like on track, not to get distracted easily? Uh, it's not easy. I'll tell you that. Mm. Um, yeah, like. There are, there are different solutions for everybody. For me personally, I, I get a lot of value out of having a support system of close friends. Um, so if I am feeling down in some way, I can talk to them. Or more often than not, they'll come to me and say, hey, is something the matter? You're acting a little off. And like, yeah, they, they keep you uh, honest in that way. Otherwise, I think it's super important to not get caught up in, uh, let's say like, turning your life into a hustle, you know? I, I think it's important to have hobbies that you don't pursue for anything other than they're fun to you. And that's like, <laughs> that's how I de-stress. I play a lot of video games, I cook a lot, I read a lot. And uh, you know, I, I dabble around on Twitch and stuff for fun sometimes, but I don't try to make that my, I, I'm not going out of my way to monetize any of that because I want it to be something that is fun. and and. Uh, relieving for me instead of more stress on stress on stress. Yeah. Um, but you know, you also gotta take time to take it easy on yourself. Um, even something as simple as looking in the mirror and telling yourself, "I'm gonna have a good day" five times over uh, can can really kind of do wonders for your mental health overall. Uh, I know mm. it sounds kind of strange, but it, it a lot of it boils down to your attitude, and and uh, that can help a lot too. So, yeah. I, you know, whatever brings you joy in life, and you may not know it off the top of your head. You may have to explore that more throughout uh, your world, but there is something there, and, and if you hold on to that, that's gonna take you pretty far. Awesome, yeah, I agree with that. Right. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Of course, my pleasure. Right. Is there any particular, like, de-stress video game you like? Oh, de-stress video game. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I play video games to get mad. 
Uh, I got lost in the world of Elden Ring for about three months, I'll tell you that. It's a lot of game in that game, y'all. So out of all of what All Might has done and how the connection he has with Deku and everything, the, um, how do you feel when you discovered doing the role when All Might said, uh, when first started saying Yamadoria? <laughs> like, when did, when did he start calling him that? Um, I mean, so at that point, I had read a bit of the manga and knew where the story was headed. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I have really fond memories of those first couple episodes, just sort of finding out where Deku lived to begin with and uh, his relationships starting on, especially with Kachan and All Might. Those were very, very formative. <laughs> Um, and that first season of My Hero is, is always going to be very special to me. Like, you know, that was us all starting out. The show wasn't very popular yet. Um, and, it, you know, it just kind of felt like we were all working towards something really, really cool. And, and I mean, to see how it's paid off now is, <laughs> is ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, I, I just think, like, to me, those early episodes of, of Hero are, like, the essence of what we love about that show. It's, like, people taking chances on the underdog, uh, getting stronger through teamwork and finding and knowing yourself and knowing what you're capable of despite what everyone else tells you. Uh, I think there's a lot that we can take from that. Oh, that, that means a lot. Awesome. It really does. Thank, Thank you. you. My question would be, how did you relate to Midoriya from the beginning with what you knew of him or what they told you about him versus now with all the mistakes and accomplishments he's made <laughs> along the way? Yeah, I mean, I've always really admired Deku's... Um, perseverance, especially in the face of adversity. You know, I, 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 it's hard to imagine going through what he went through. And I, I think, you know, everyone kind of can relate to um, one, Deku one way or another, whether it's, it's um, you know, you've been bullied in school or, or uh, people tell you that you're less than or that you can't achieve your dreams that you have deep in your heart. And, uh, you know, especially for, for aspiring creatives. Uh, I, I feel like we feel quite a bit of that growing up. Uh, so I wanted Deku to serve as sort of a, uh, a you can do it to, to everyone out there who really kind of needs that voice in their head. Because, um, you know, now, like you said, six seasons later, he's matured so much. He's made so many friends. He's learned a lot. And he's got so many new tools in, uh, under his belt that uh, it, it really is inspiring like uh, to, to live with a character for so long and see how much he means to so many people for, for a million different reasons is just it's super humbling. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. My question is, if you've recently seen the new Horikoshi art where Deku is dressed up as Mirko. Yeah. And if you had to put Deku in any other hero outfit, not All Might, who would it be? Well, uh, if we're starting at Mirko, I feel like we could go even further. Let's show a little more, you know? Like, <laughs> um, I don't know. Let's, let's, let's see him with, uh, with Midnight next, right? <laughs> Mount Lady. Yeah. Go for it. I, I, the sky's the limit. Right. Thank you. Of course. Of course. I'm here for it. How it was when you met uh, Daiki Yamashita. Um, oh, wow. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, I, I met the Japanese actor for Deku, uh, Daki Yamashita. That was when the first movie came out. That was um, uh, uh, he, uh, Two Heroes, right? Yeah, yeah so uh, that was our first ever My Hero film. And they flew me and Colleen, our director, out to Los Angeles for Anime Expo this year, or that year. And they also flew out the voice of Deku in Japan, as well as uh, um, the two movie characters. Um, it, that was amazing. It, it really, like, of course, I was very uh, scared. And not, not afraid, but nervous, I should say. Um, but it turns out he, uh, he's an amazing guy. We got to kind of chat via an electronic translator for a bit throughout the night. Um, we talked a lot about food. We're both very food motivated. So that's, you know, we get along there. Um, it, was, it was great. Like, uh, for some reason, throughout the night, uh, apparently the Japanese voice of Todoroki was also like in Los Angeles, so he, he dialed him up and was like, you wanna come to dinner with us? I'm like, oh my god, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, and uh, from what I gather, that is just an extremely rare kind of situation, so I am really thrilled I got to do that. I hope, I hope someday again we get to meet up like that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, of course. So you voiced Tsumugi Aoba in um, N Stars. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask, um, who is your favorite N Stars character? 
if you um, remember. It's a little tough because uh, Sumugi only popped up so often, and it was usually with his own bandmates. I, I do have very um, good memories of a scene. I, it was the character that was played by Derek Snow. I, if I recall, he had like red hair. Uh, but they were talking about... Maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm wrong. But Derek Snow played this character, and uh, there's just some scene where we were talking about all kinds of weird stuff, <laughs> and like his weird backstory, and Samugi started laughing about something. It's all a little hazy, but uh, I remember liking that character a lot, and kind of wondering, like, what's his deal? Maybe, like, Kuro, maybe? I'm not sure. I'm so not sorry. I wish I, wish I knew. Oh, not to me, probably. Yeah, 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 that sounds right. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I wanted to ask. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, good question. So, do you think Naruto and Deku would be friends, and who would win in a fight? Um, I think they'd get along, and Deku uh, would win, because uh, I say so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, actually, Naruto's a, a grown adult now, so he'd probably win. Thank you very much. Yeah, I of course. It. Thank you. How do you decide when you're first starting out what voice to use for these characters, since they're so different from each one? I mean, that sort of inspiration can come in, in a, a few different forms. Uh, I will say, you know, a lot of these characters start with just my bass voice. You know, that's sort of the baseline. We take it from there. I try to figure out sort of something we have in common. You know, that could be a lot or it could be a real struggle. But that sort of detective work starts to form the character. And then uh, I will take inspiration from the Japanese audio if we're dubbing anime. Um, I try not to go out of my way to copy, but I do want to live in that same space that they've laid down for us. So as long as I'm not too far out of that realm, I feel like I'm probably on the right track. Um, otherwise, there's a bunch of different questions you can ask yourself. Like, um, I would say Dida from Ranking of Kings, he's a, a recent character I played, sits in the same sort of vocal area as, say, Midoriya or Luck, but because of his upbringing, because of his nobility, he, he speaks with a very different affected sort of air. Um, so that can be sort of the, the, uh, a quality that you can start with. And I, I have a lot of trust in my directors to sort of keep me on the right track, make sure I'm not too off base. Uh, but in, in, the most, in most cases, you know, if they've cast me to come in for that character, they want what I am bringing to the table. So I, uh, yeah, that's, that's sort of, where I start, uh, <laughs> and of course it's a lot more complicated than that. There's, there's like instinct, there's just stuff that I, I don't even think about after having acted for, you know, over half my life. Uh, but that's sort of what comes to mind first for me. Thank you. Of course, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I was wondering what your opinion on Stars Align is. Ah, uh, you have good taste. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Uh, I loved Stars Align. I don't often get to play characters like Maki who are just so disaffected by everything. Um, and unfortunately, it seems like we kind of, we ended too soon. Like, I, w I know there is more story to tell. I wish that we could um, revisit those characters someday. Uh, but otherwise, it was, it was really fun. You know, it wasn't your standard sports anime. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it was a bit subversive and, uh, and clever in some ways. So that was just a blast. Like, from, from episode one to where we ended up, I didn't expect that journey at all. Thank you. Thank you so much. I had a question about Deku. Okay. Um, he's very like expressive in his lines in the anime, and there's a lot of like high tension scenes he's in. Was there any specific like scene or line you recorded that kind of stuck with you and like impacted you the most? Um, I guess in terms of impact, yeah, for Deku, it's always sort of the big battles or the aftermath mm -hmm. of, of them. Um, you know, a, a Deku moment that really sticks with me that kind of broke my heart was um, uh, the second movie. I don't know if everyone has seen it. I, I, of course, I won't spoil too much, but uh, at, at the end of that climactic fight in the second film, um, Deku is in real bad shape. So there's some lines that I, I got to deliver there that I'm very proud of uh, because he's, li he's given it everything. You know, he's totally plus ultra and then some, and, and this is where he's left off. So uh, yeah, it was, that was tough to get through. Um, it, it was very tender, you know, in, in a world of, of larger than life, superhero, anime, crazy. Uh, it is just very, it, one of those really special personal moments that I got to uh, enjoy. So yeah, that, that sticks out as something that was very poignant. Cool, thank you. Thank you, that's great. You have like 
a routine that you use to get into voice acting? Like, do you do some push-ups? Do you like drink like some coffee? Do you what do you what, what's what do you do to prepare? I do drink coffee, though many people say you shouldn't. Uh, but I'm living my own life, y'all. Uh huh. <laughs> I can't be tamed. Uh, no, I mean. Uh, I think it is very important that uh, you warm up before any kind of voiceover session. It really helps if you know what kind of character you're going in for. Like if I know I'm going in for a My Hero session, I'll kind of warm up to the higher part of my range so that that's comfortable and it's, it's not cool. Um, otherwise, yeah, I, I, I have a background in theater and singing, so a lot of my personal warm ups come from that, uh, you know, scales or, or whatever, um, tongue twisters, diction exercises, that kind of thing. Um, it's all just really important because you want to be ready when you step into the booth. You don't want to have to take 10 minutes to be like, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Because uh, it's just sort of a waste of time. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, I, I think warming up is very important. Um, and, you know, you can all find your own ways that, that work for you, etc. And mine works for me. So um, I, I will say, if I don't warm up, I can really tell. Uh, especially if, I, if I'm going back to the product at the end, I'm like, ugh, Justin, you should you should have warmed up, bud. So. All right. Well, Perth, thank you. Thank you. Of course. I have a question about Deku. Okay. Uh, I was wondering if there is there any part of the character that you resonate with on a personal level? Oh, so many. Um, I think I think we share a kind of nervous energy. Um, I. I I think we're both very passionate and dedicated to the uh, things that we love and our pursuits and our friends. Um, uh, I, in many ways, I admire his perseverance. That's something I, I have trouble with follow through a lot of the time. Uh, so, you know, I still have a lot to learn from Deku as well. Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I think we share that sort of optimistic outlook and, um, and it wants to be better and, and improve ourselves and, and the world around us. So, yeah. Thank you. Love you, by the way. <laughs> Thank uh, you. So, like I was saying earlier, I got into anime almost three years ago. Sweet. And along that journey, I came across Luck. Hey, and yeah. he is, like, in my eyes, the funniest character in Black Clover. <laughs> and he, he's always <laughs> on go, ready to fight somebody. Like, it's, it's hilarious. Yep. But he also has, like, a tragic backstory on top of that to where he counters that tragedy and takes it and turns it into a positive thing and right. just fights for his team no matter what. And that, that's, that's something I really like about Luck. Like, it's really inspirational about that. Yeah, and I, I agree. Like, Luck in, in a different world could really turn into sort of just a one-note character. Uh, but but his, what he's been through and his trauma that makes him the way that he is, that it really fleshes out... Uh, just his essence, and I, I really appreciate that. Like, he's so much fun, he's such a jerk. Uh, <laughs> but True. he's, again, he's got his own weird convictions. Like, he knows what he's about, and you gotta respect yeah. that. Have a great rest of your con. <laughs> Thank you very much, of course. When you were voice acting as Deku, what was your favorite episode? Wow, yeah, um, there have been so many great ones, right? I would say up until this year, uh, the one I would always go to is Deku vs. Todoroki in the festival, in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, just what a feast for the senses, y'all. Um, but I will say, this, this season six that's going on right now has some of my favorite moments from a bunch of different characters, Deku included. Uh, so, again, I know it's all pretty fresh, I won't get too much into it, but there's, uh, it's kind of popping off right now, y'all. Um, yeah, there's a, a big sort of long fight is happening right now that uh, has been a real joy to be a part of. So excited to share that with y'all. If you could bring back a season to voice, um, which one would you do? Of any show? Yeah, because like for me it'd be Seraph of the End, but like... Uh, my, of course, my gut answer is all of them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Seraph of the End for sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> they kind of dogged us on that ending, huh? Yeah. Uh, but, but because I swore, they were like, all right, well, that's a little cliffhanger. We'll get back to it on season three. Uh, and then they started working on a little show called Attack on Titan. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I really hope we get to revisit those characters someday. I'm not holding my breath, but if we did, I would feel very fortunate. And I, I want to tell more of their story. <laughs> you all rule. Thank you so much. Thank you.